Welcome to the party. It's your watch time, friend. If you're seeing me, if you're listening, then it's time to watch something. What's up guys, it's your girl D and this is Watch Time Friends where you watch stuff with me, your friend D, because my other friends don't like me like that. Today we are watching Bridgerton Season 3, Episode 8. It is the finale. It went it just it, it just happened so fast. I it's just not fair to be to be honest. So yeah. Last time Colin had found out that Pen was Lady Whistledown. Uh, but we seem to get through it and now Cressida has possibly also figured out that Penn is Lady Whistledown on a fluke just by happenstance she wasn't even looking for that information she was just looking for someone who can print or the one who prints Lady Whistledown because she was looking for her money and then oh dude who wasn't even the right guy just started running in his mouth and now and now now we're here so, <sighs> and now oh, it, if she really believes this pen, she's for sure gonna go to the queen. And the queen might not have even like really had her eye on Penelope because she thought it was a Bridgerton. So Penelope just became a Bridgerton like literally five seconds ago. So I don't think she ever would have thought it was Pen. But if Cressida comes to her and says it's Penelope Featherington. I think the queen will believe her and so then Cressida will get her five thousand dollars and the queen will get lady whistledown <sighs> then the rest of the bridgerton family will know that penn has been the one writing about them you know so then there's that uh so yeah i'm not gonna hold y'all up let's watch something <laughs> morning how did you sleep fitfully i am off to bridgeton house for breakfast but my mother is coming i'll give you and your mother some privacy oh, you do not have to leave i wish to you have a visitor in the drawing room serve her tea but not yet ready who is it is it somewhere we're not expecting good morning mama oh cressida good morning i trust you had a happy wedding night what are you doing here? I'm simply paying a visit to the esteemed Lady Whistledown. I know your secret. How's she gonna play this? Whatever you think you know, you're incorrect. Now I wish for you to leave. You know, thinking back on everything it makes perfect sense. No one would ever suspect you, as you are so very forgettable. Okay. Shame I cannot stay long to savor it, seeing as I am under lock and key until my aunt arrives to steal me to the countryside. You know you can still run away, right? You are going to pay me double the Queen's reward so that I might set up my life abroad. Or I will tell everyone of your true identity. No one would believe you, Cressida. Your reputation could not be any lower at present. What makes you believe I have that kind of money? Penelope and I were just discussing whether or not I am to be believed. Oh boy. Think of your daughter's love of the written word. I think of how she is so easily overlooked, allowing her to disappear for great periods of time. She is the true Lady Whistledown. Because you will pay me my sum. She has or been I paying attention to her daughter to the entire time, time. like that. Great. Do enjoy your morning, ladies. Now we're being blackmailed. Penelope. She was dogging the heck out of her family too, so this is bad. <laughs> I would, I would argue that she wrote worse about her own family than the Bridgertons. What a fool I have been. Mama. All the terrible things you've written about your sisters, about me, about yourself. I have fought with every tool at my disposal to claw us out of ruin time and time again, and yet, under my own roof, my own blood has been sowing the seeds of our ruin all along. How could you, Penelope? Does your husband know? Well, he cannot know about this latest scandal. For a gentleman such as Mr. Bridgerton to know that your actions have led to blackmail. 
You'd have grounds for an annulment. Even the most sanctimonious bishop would grant. Well, I do not wish to lie anymore. I must tell Colin. <sighs> you play carelessly today, Lady Danbury. The game will not last long. Her Majesty has been quite forthcoming with accusations of late. It is the truth. I am closer to finding Lady Whistledown than ever before. And what will you do once you have uncovered her? I will have won, of course. And then? Right, that's what I've been saying this whole time. command her to stop writing? Lock her in a dungeon? What are you trying to say, Lady Danbury? Well, you gained when Whistledown winning. first started writing, I assumed it. she was someone with power in the town. But in her latest editions, it has become evident that there is a vulnerability there. That perhaps Lady Whistledown is not trying to beat you at your own game. Perhaps she is merely trying to stay in the game as a vulnerable player. A feeling, perhaps, you can relate to. You could have had me in checkmate, Lady Danbury. I realize that. But then the game would be over early. Mm. And what fun is there in that? Exactly! Exactly. I mean, come on. <laughs> have you ever seen a lady with child at a ball, Philippa? No. That is because once women start showing, they are expected to retreat from society. Philippa and I are going to host a ball <gasps> centered on the color purple. And orange. Crystal and gold and hundreds of flowers. And we can have bugs. <laughs> and uh, should we discuss a budget? <laughs> right. Of course. It should be very, very large. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> we are out like any other family <laughs> having ice cream and planning a wedding. <laughs> there is still going to be a wedding. Well, of course. It is only that John and I are going to apply for a special license so that we can have a simple, small ceremony at home, after which we shall retreat to John's family estate. We should like to take residence at John's primary estate. In Scotland? In Scotland? Uh, where is that exactly? It's close to the border. Uh, no, the Highlands. I cannot wait for the quiet. Well, that'll be great for <laughs> great for her. Oh. You know the family will be fine. <laughs> her Majesty accused me of being whistled down once, and I survived it. Though not she without did. some scars. Do not let your marriage be the scar. No. I was not expecting to see you till later this afternoon. She knows, Colin. You do not have to hide your ire. Uh, certainly, we should not be having this discussion in front of Miss Bridgerton. She knows everything as well. Wonderful. So glad to see the whole of Mayfair seem to know before you own <laughs> mother. And why do we all suddenly know that we know? Because Cressida discovered my secret. She demands £10,000 to keep it. If she knows, we must prevent her from revealing it. Oh, I'm not asking for your help. I merely wanted to be honest with it you. It is not up to you what we do. OK. <laughs> and I will not stand for anyone blackmailing my wife. I can pay her. You have made that higher sum. Slightly more, if we're being honest. Mmm, she make it big. All this time. I mean, she worked for it. You're not paying Miss Carper a single penny. Perhaps you will pay her, Mr. Uh, Bridgerton. Uh, no, he cannot. No one is paying her. And what do you propose we do? Yeah, what's your Please, plan you here? Slept. I will not cower to Miss Carper. I will call upon her tomorrow. Bring her to see this cause of action is ruinous for everyone involved. It is the only way forward. But how do you expect to convince her not to say anything if you're not going to I mean, she's already either getting sent away to Wales or having to run away. So if unless you can present her with something that is worse than that, if she tells, I don't I don't see what's stopping her from telling the queen. Mr. Bridgerton. Lady Cowper. At this point, she might go to the queen and might be about to tell her and then she might stop her and tell her, I don't want to know. I will give you five minutes. I take it your mother does not know about your blackmailing my wife? I no longer trust anyone but myself. You must feel terribly lonely. I have known what it's like to be truly alone. And I'm off on my travels. Poor Mr. Bridgerton. Traveling the continent, seeing the great sights of the world, as only a man can do. Mm -hmm. 
It is a privilege to travel. But this last year, I found myself yearning to hear word from home, but I did not hear back from her or anyone else. It felt as if everyone was busy with their lives without the need for me in them. So I attempted to harden myself. It is not a path I would recommend. It seems you've come for me to pay you sympathy, but I'm the one who is meant to be paid. I have not come for your sympathy. I have come for your mercy. Penelope is no villain. I can understand why you might hate Whistledown. Her words are cutting, and still, her readers are willing to pay to read about themselves week after week. You do not sound as if you hate Whistledown. You sound as if you are jealous of her. No, I'm not. There is Whistledown, and then there is Penelope. Imagine being so ignored. You feel invisible, but perhaps it is understandable that at times her column has reflected the cruelty around her, a cruelty I imagine you have felt too. I probably contributed a little bit to that as well. And she did not savage you in her latest column. If even Penelope can find grace for you, do you not see that the Ton too will forgive you? And surely your father will welcome you back to London when all this passes? No, he won't. A family's love is enduring. No, it is not hers. That is the difference between you and me. You take for granted that you will always have your family's support. We are not the same, Mr. Bridgerton, and we never will be. Miss Carper. He was so close. So close. You will not be relieved if we say you are lying. You have no proof. I have a printer's apprentice who is willing to corroborate the truth. You have until the Dankworth Finch Ball to pay me. In fact, reflecting upon the lack of support I shall have in the future, perhaps I am not asking for enough from you. Oh my gosh. Just a little extra funds to throw the ball of the season. Surely we are owed, as you spent much more on Penelope's wedding than on ours. Because you're both married on title misters, while Penelope married a very wealthy Bridgerton. Now is not a good time. I am expecting a visitor. Who? <laughs> Have no fear, ladies. I'm afraid I have failed. And she wants double mm -hmm. now. Why do you not have that son? There is more. There's she more. requires you use your column to restore her reputation. It seems I have made everything worse. Oh, this is my fault. Yep. <laughs> Perhaps Penelope was right. It would have been better to just pay her. I have the funds. I will have to ask Benedict to sign off on such a large expenditure. You would tell your brother about Penelope's identity? No. I will have to invent some kind of a lie. Dang it. I'm certain the Cowper girl only wants you to write a few glowing words on her appearance and charm. No, because once you restore her reputation, she's going to keep asking you for favors. Because as long as she's there and she knows your secret, she's always going to have that over you. She's not just going to stop at the one thing. She's going to... Yeah. Uh, at least that's what I, that's what I predict. That's what I gather. Francesca seems to have found an inner courage. Yes, she has. And now she is using it to get as far away from her mother as possible. <laughs> you will have my support in Francesca's absence. And also my brother's. If you wish it. Uh, we do not have to discuss that. Oh, but since but we're already talking we about it, though. Might as well. Lord Anderson has been an exemplary gentleman. And uh, if you were to give your blessing... Oh, it is certainly not my place to give or withhold a blessing on the matter. You are both adults. You may do as you wish. After all, mm -hmm. it is not as though I asked your permission. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about... You Yikes. know. Yes. I know my father was a good man. And that you have been a very good friend. And that is all I need to know. And my brother is a good man. And you are a good friend. And that is all I need to know as well. Aww. But if he sours things between the two of you, I will pick you over him. I shall not lose you for his folly. There is nary a man alive with such power. <laughs> I had totally forgot that her and 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 Lady Bridgerton's dad like were a thing for a quick second. I'm going to have tea with my mother before your sister's wedding. But I would spare you the confines of a shared carriage. What are these? 
Oh, are these like a bunch of letters that she never sent him? Or are those letters that she did send him? That he kept? I cannot put him off any longer, ma'am. That solicitor, he is here. Show him in, I suppose. I mean, what can you really say now? Both of your, I um, mean, two of your daughters Lady are pregnant. Lady Featherington, Walter, Walter Dundas Square, I do remember. Though some have told me they do find release from deception a comforting feeling. I pray you have sufficient evidence for all the accusations you seem poised to make. Not the evidence I sought, no, but all the evidence I shall need. <laughs> okay. Ah, the money you inherited from your Aunt Petunia. I thought it quite curious that you came into such a fortune just as Jack Featherington ran away with yours. And in fact, Aunt Petunia's neighbors in Cornwall seem to agree with me. From what I hear, she was in a perpetual state of poverty. Who's to say she was not a great saver, living frugally so that others might one day benefit? Her creditors. Ooh. Oh, Lady Featherington, I know your funds came from Jack Featherington's fraudulent activities. And I believe the Crown will agree that the Featherington title should be transferred to a more scrupulous family. Dang it. I think we have to kidnap him. Oh! I, I don't know where that was about to go. Is your money the money Cousin Jack took from the ton? It's not as if any of them needed that money the way we did. You stole from them! Uh, you humiliated them. You... Eh, but they paid for it, though. <laughs> they wanted to. <laughs> they wanted to pay me. I did what I had to do to protect this family. Who were you protecting with your collar? Myself! Oh, uh, from whom? Well... I think you know. I see. You know, it's no easy thing being a parent. How was I to raise daughters when all my life I was taught that all power comes from a man? What you have done, you have done entirely on your own. And even if I do not like what you have written over the years, it is a great regret of mine that I've overlooked you for so long. You and I both. We have done the best we can with the opportunities that society has afforded us. Perhaps there were other ways, but at the time I, I could not see them. What the Lady Whistledown write about our disgrace when I am exposed? Technically, she doesn't have to say it. She will write. Or she could talk you up. That is a great power. What a thing you have made for yourself. Thank you. Perhaps we are more alike than I care to admit. Surely there's something we can do. I have no ideas, but I don't know. It's gotta be something. You are going to bring so much brightness to Scotland. <laughs> You're upset about me leaving? No, of course not. I, I am, well, I, I did not expect you to settle quite so far away. <laughs> Anthony and Kate are headed for India. Yes, but you have spent so much time away from us already in bath with your aunt or on your own when you are home now i fear i may be losing you for good mama it, it is the opposite it is difficult sometimes to hear my own voice amidst the noise of this house <laughs> whereas with john i hear myself more and more <laughs> it is my great hope that the silence and beauty of Scotland will allow me to know myself better so that you can all know me better as well. My brave, clever girl. You know, when I first met your father, I can barely speak my own name. I was so taken by him. I, I stumbled over words most familiar. Ma, I, I thought we had moved past this. John it is a fine man and a good choice. What I was going to say is that for the longest time, I thought that th that is what love must be like for everyone. Surprising, forceful, quick. But you have shown me that there is another way, that there is beauty in the slow approach. You are already so wise beyond your years. I think you will do very well in Scotland. <laughs> I take thee to be my lawful wedded wife, to have and to hold. I take thee to be my lawful husband, to have and to hold from this day forward. Oh. 
May you now live together in holy matrimony until your dying breath. <laughs> Do you want us to look away? <laughs> Now that I am wed, Mother's attention may turn to you again, Ooh. unless she is distracting. <laughs> True. Excuse me. I feel I should greet Mrs. Mondrich. It was a beautiful ceremony. I thought so. Mm. Second only to the beauty of its hostess. <laughs> you flatter me. I am sincere, and sincere in wondering if you would be so kind as to save a dance for me at the next ball. Uh, the uh, Dagworth Finch Ball, I, uh, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that would be most adequate. <laughs> good. Very good. <laughs> what was that you were saying before about stumbling over your words? I will not let my lies spread any further than they already have. Then how am I meant to help you? By loving me. You've given me so much already. It is not what you do for me that makes me love you. It is your kindness, your empathy. Just being you is enough. Colin, I do not need you to save me. I just need you to stand by me, to hold me, to kiss me. I want very much to do those things. Well, what is it that restrains you? I do not know, but I do know this. Miss Cowper still hangs over us, and as long as you live with this secret, there will always be something between us. I know. Perhaps that is the key. What are you saying? Oh, man. Are you going to tell everyone that it's you? A letter for you, Your Majesty. Oh, you don't think she asked the queen for help? Colin, I have received a letter from your wife. We had better sit. What is this plan? What's happening here? <laughs> it is no wonder she's turned out the way she has. The house is far too warm. You're right, sister. It is my wife's doing. This guy is the worst. Is. I'm not going anywhere with her. Come, girl. Present yourself so that I may see what I have to work upon. Mm. It seems like her aunt is cut from the same cloth as her dad, so great. Your maid sent me right up. Is uh, Paul meeting us? I believe he is with someone else tonight. I must be honest with you. Mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. much as I have enjoyed the three of us together, mm -hmm. I was hoping it could just be the two of us tonight. Oh, have you not enjoyed having Paul with us? <laughs> she I wants you all to herself. Very much, but maybe Paul is friendly, and I am finding that I am beginning to care for you, Benedict. More than friends. You had something Paul didn't have. Openness. I don't know. Abundance of love. Oh, that's what it was. I've never met someone so similar to me. And I'm beginning to wonder what if we did allow things to grow more serious between us. Tilly. Mm hmm You were extraordinary. Okay. But I'm not certain that serious is what I want. Dang. What happened between the three of us? What has happened ever since I met you it has made me realize how good it feels to be free. You've opened my world. <laughs> Just like, gosh dang it. <laughs> what you wanted the same thing. <laughs> I did, till I saw what it felt like to share you. <laughs> I am as surprised as you are. I've spent nearly all of my life in either Mayfair or at Aubrey Hall. If I'm going to attempt to make change in the world, certainly I shall need to see some of it first. Meet people who are not my family or debutantes in the marriage mart. You wish to change the world again? I thought you were more interested in fitting in this year. Mm, I think I am properly done with all of that. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> you look lovely. My efforts will be wasted, knowing the disappointment that awaits behind those doors. Uncertain Farley has done her utmost. <laughs> that is something I was thinking. Wondering, is, is anyone gonna show up? Ooh. Ooh, wow. Mama! Thank you! 
What is the meaning of this? Well, it must have been you. Who paid for all of that? I sure it wasn't them. Uh, Mama told me she wished for you to have the greatest ball Mayfair has ever seen. No. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Aw, it's nice that she did something nice for her sisters. But also, I'm sure there's a something else in the works here. This is our last night in society. At least Prudence and Philip are having the time of their life. <laughs> your Majesty! Oh. Forgive us, Your Majesty. We do not have a perch for you because we did not think you would accept our invitation. <laughs> it is not your invitation that brings me here. She's uh -oh. playing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. As a result of my tireless search, placing her in an impossible situation, mm -hmm. I received a letter from Lady Whistledown. She calls upon my mercy, asking to address you all herself, to plead her case publicly before I pass my judgment. Mm -hmm. So I turn the floor over now to the scribe herself. Oh, bless you. Not him. <laughs> Her. Oh, did she, did you? I'm so confused. Did she tell the queen or did the queen figure it out? Hello. Hi. Oh. Or sh should I say, dearest gentle readers? Oh boy. <sighs> you got this. I know. It is no laughing matter. What I have done. In the beginning, I never thought anyone would take my writing seriously. No one has ever taken any part of me seriously. I wrote about all of you because I was captivated by you. Living your lives so out in the open. It was easy to cast aspersions from the shadows where I could not be found. But I see now how much courage it takes to live a life out in the open. And to know, regardless of the outcome, one always has worth. Gossip is information. It forges bonds. But I can no longer conceal the biggest piece of information I have. Mm -hmm. My identity. That is why I am so very grateful to our queen for forcing me out of the shadows with her most cunning scheme. If she affords me the chance to continue, mm -hmm. I mean to aim my quill more responsibly. That is my repentance. Oh. Well. She seems humbled, but we will be watching that she remains so. So she can keep her head. What is life without a little gossip? <laughs> well, all right then. <laughs> so, uh, back to the party, I guess. Now, Molly, the bugs. The what? The what? What'd you say? Oh, butterflies. Imagine if they just let out, <laughs> let out some roaches or something. Insane. <laughs> well, that went better than I thought it would. I'm glad they're easily distractible. You are a genius. I know. <laughs> that was a good idea. You're a wonder. Could not have done that without your support. And the Queen's. Yes, and with her acceptance, we can now tell that solicitor your money came from my writing. <laughs> We'll have no recourse. Time for us to do better. I go. It's a real one. Thank you for your letter. I do not believe I've seen my mother so quickly shocked. I believe she is proud of you. There is something I left out of that letter, but I would not object to an annulment if you requested one. Whistledown has upset many who will not soon forget. Ever since I found out you are Whistledown, I have done everything I can to try to separate you from her. But the other day, I went back and read all of the letters you have sent me. You are her. You have always had one voice. There is no separating you from Whistledown. I think in truth, I... 
I have been envious of you, of your success, of your bravery. And now I simply cannot believe that a woman with such bravery loves me. My only purpose in life is to love a woman as great as you. And I will be a very fulfilled man indeed. I love you. You are a good man, Mr. Bridgerton. Oh, snap! Lady Bridgerton's dancing with, um, what's his face? Marcus? I'm positively elated because I've come up with a rather brilliant idea. Okay. Or a request, rather. Okay. And what request is that? Let me accompany you to Scotland. Mama will love the idea of me keeping an eye on you, but in truth, I simply wish to live for a little while outside our tiny bubble. As long as you stay in your wing of the castle. <laughs> we will be living in a proper castle. <laughs> we? Oh. Hey, Eloise has asked to accompany us. Um, if that does not burden you, my lord. Not at all. That is wonderful news. <laughs> it is. And thankfully, my cousin has finally arrived to complete our travel party. It gives me great pleasure to introduce... Okay. Michaela Sterling, I caution you. Hello. Every sordid detail John has spoken about me is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is power. <laughs> and you must be? I am. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I'm Francesca. Yeah. Bridgerton. Kill Martin. <laughs> Kill Martin is my name now. Oh, yeah, that's it's a pleasure true. To make your acquaintance. Wait, so is his last name not Singleton? Why did I think he said his name was John Singleton? I don't know. To all those who feel they have been wronged by this humble writer, my sincere apologies. Hi, Cressida. Only the best. Bang. But with every closing chapter, the story is sure to grow richer and deeper. It has been quite a journey we have taken together. And so it is with the heaviest heart that I write this final, unbelievably short sentence as Lady Whistledown. Goodbye. Wait. Goodbye. You're the best. Mm -hmm. Miss Cats above them all. Yes. You are. Yes. Boy, they I still are. cannot fully believe you had a boy. And the heir, no less. <laughs> the new Lord Let's Turing go. is quite handsome. Too bad that letter wasn't real. But that's hilarious. Your father is always trying to distract us with a clever word and a beguiling smile. I think my smile is beguiling. I'm glad we had daughters. I'm certain they will both marry very well. I think little uh, Philomena will one day become a great writer without any need little of a what? husband. Philomena is a very interesting name. And with the retirement of my literary persona, I should like to formally introduce myself. Wait, she's... Oh. Well, she's gonna write as Penelope Bridgerton? Previous wallflower, current columnist, observer, I have my moments. And, and hopefully, hopefully, dear reader, you will stay on to enjoy them with me as we begin this next part of our journey. Yours truly, Penelope Bridgerton. Wow. Man, I can't believe it's over already. Like, dang. It felt like that season went by so fast, even with the break. Dang. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder if it'll be the same though, like, with her writing as herself and people knowing her identity. Like she already said that she was gonna write differently, you know, probably not be so harsh and stuff like that. And if she does write, obviously she can't write about the queen anymore. <laughs> Cause like I said, the queen could just retaliate against her, force her to stop writing, whatever, whatever. So there's that. Now also, if she writes something about someone then they could also retaliate against her or her family, whatever. So, yeah, I have a feeling it's not going to be the same as it was. 
before. Yeah, it's not gonna be the same. But at least she gets to keep writing. And um, yeah, at least she gets to keep writing. And I hope that it is still as successful as it was before. Because I think at this point, oh, well, no, they're just saying the story that they're gonna tell the solicitor is that their money is coming from Penelope's writing but it's actually still <laughs> the money they stole from the <laughs> I was about to say if they're living off of Penelope's money that she's getting from writing then she's gonna have to keep it up in which case it wouldn't be it really probably wouldn't be fun anymore if her family's surviving off of that money then it'd be like this is the job <laughs> but um you know now that I think about it Penelope was able to keep writing and she's getting paid for it and that's basically a job so why can't Will keep his bar or club or whatever like can he not get it reinstated I guess he already sold it dang that really sucks dang well I don't know I'd like to see them back next season and I'd like to see at least them get something else if it's not the club because you know I think he was dealing with losing it, but I still think he's feeling that loss pretty heavily. And so, yeah, hopefully we get some resolution with that. Cause like just losing it, like having to do what everybody wants you to do with just losing the club that you worked so hard for. And, and then that's it. That's the end of the story. Like it, it can't be. So I hope there's more to that. And I also hope that Eloise has fun and and finds what she's looking for in scotland yeah and then when she comes back who knows is there a season four if there is a season four it's sure gonna be interesting because benedict is seemingly not interested in getting married eloise uh doesn't seem like she's interested in getting married and i don't think gregory or hyacinth are old enough so unless they got a secret sibling or unless the season is about Lady Bridgerton and Lady Danbury's brother, I'd watch that. <laughs> um, hmm, yeah, that should be interesting. Well, overall, I really enjoyed this season. I really, I don't know out of the three Bridgerton seasons I don't know which one is my favorite I've liked them all for different reasons I can't pick a favorite but you guys what are you what's your favorite season been so far have you seen all three uh seasons of Bridgerton which has been your favorite season so far I'm really interested maybe you can convince me to pick one <laughs> um but yeah if you managed to this point in the video thank you so much for watching with me if you've been watching all of these reactions to the whole season hey thank you so much hey <laughs> we made it <laughs> um if you liked it you can leave a like and if you want to see more from me consider subscribing and if you're interested in seeing these videos full and uncut you can check out my patreon the link will be in the description man is bittersweet but that's gonna be a wrap on this one and so i hope to see you guys in the next one peace welcome to the party it's your watch time friend if you sing and eat if you listen